you are one of our pieces of equipment. This is a uh, custom built planter that I have built from a uh, John Deere 7000 planter. Uh, the big, the only real difference is that it's a two row. Uh, the John Deere 7000, originally the smallest one was a four row. But this allows us to plant uh, more tighter, uh, in tighter spots and uh, quickly change out for varieties a little faster than if you had four rows. Because some of the uh, sweet corn varieties that I'll try uh, will be like 10,000 10, seeds or so. And splitting that across four rows is sometimes uh, annoying. So, using two row for me has been really good. Uh, this evening we've been working on uh, using this to also plant our pumpkins. Uh, for the plunk pumpkins, uh, different varieties, I uh, use uh, different, uh, uh, what they would be called meters. That's what uh, these uh, two uh, uh, meter holders, or you know, where the hopper holders are. Uh, I'm currently having them changed out to a uh, modified meter that uh, uh, picks up only 50%. Basically, there's little fingers inside the meter that will pick up a seed drop it, I cut off 50% of those. That way they'll be planted further apart. For the corn, I would use a uh, corn meter that would have the, all its fingers on there and it would pick up each individual corn and uh, <clears throat> drop it at the appropriate distance, which I can set using gear ratios on this. This is the drive wheel. It will drive both the seed, uh, the seed meters and my dry fertilizer. And in, if you want to take a peek inside, this is the, the dry fertilizer. And I can adjust its rate using the gears on the side. As I'm driving along to make sure everything's working, I do make sure that, that the drive wheel is pressing against the ground. I do look at this from the back of the tractor to make sure it's turning. If this is turning, then I know the drive wheel is being pressed in. Now, I'll show you one of the hoppers and meters. This is a unmodified uh, corn meter. Uh, what I will do for some of my plantings is uh, for the weirder stuff. For, for corn, this is, I don't have to touch anything on it. It works just fine. But for some of the squashes, I'd like them somewhat close, but, uh, but corn meters, they have a tendency not to pick it up so well for the squash seed. One reason is because there's a little brush on there that helps to brush off excess seed. I will remove that. So <clears throat> that's one way I modify it for the close squash. Like for instance, acorn, acorn squash, they're semi-bush. I will plant them fairly close together and uh, I can use a normal corn meter just without the brush on it. Actually, I have my modified. This is the brush, brushless. <laughs> the brushless. Yeah, this is the, uh, where a brush would normally be installed on it. I would remove it. This is actually what I modified for the pumpkin. If you will look, I don't know if you can see it, but there are little fingers. Let's see if we can. Yeah, little fingers inside to pick it up. And this one has some of those fingers removed. <clears throat> that will have it so I can space the pumpkins, the big pumpkins, that would be like some of the well, the cheap Howden or the Conestoga Giant and so forth. Some of the long buying ones when I plant them further apart. That seems to work quite well. And I will also only put one pod or you know, one hopper on, so that way I can do six foot apart rows. This uh, planter is set up for 36 inches, not 30 inches, 36 inches. So for a fun fact, Matthew Glen Farms plants all its corn and pumpkin and most of its row crops at 36 inches, other than the industry standard of 30 inches. So I also use it, been using it this year for uh, green beans. Uh, for that, I have a different uh, 
assembly on here. I don't have a bean meter for it, but I have the bean cups, which uh, so far is working just fine. It's not. It's a very cheap method on uh, planting beans. I might in the future consider the bean meters, but I haven't uh, found out if they will work right with edible beans. The bean cups seem to be doing quite well at this point. You'll be able. Which, by the way. Quick note, I think the beans might be ready about the first week in July. <laughs> of course, I've mentioned that in the other video. Uh, and this one, oh, it's installed, hinges on, lowers in place, locks, and then there's a side spring on it to disengage or engage the drive. That turns on the hopper, so when I start going, I can start planting. Uh, well, I think that's, uh, well, I can also show this helps with the depth gauge. This here, I can set how deep I want the seed, which is very convenient. This will uh, uh, hug the soil to, uh, uh, hug the soil so the disc remains at uh, the disc opener. There's a disc opener down here where the seed will drop down and through. Uh, that uh, has the difference between there and there. The disc is for the depth of the seed. These back here are used to pinch and uh, pinch the uh, opened row, a little ditch, to close it up and cover up the seed. <clears throat> Overall, this machine has been very nice. Uh, there's not much more I can say about it. So, good evening. And and see you next time.